Max Nads had a problem. Well, Max had many problems, like the fact that his toaster had developed a sentient grudge and would only produce slightly burned toast out of spite, but the one currently occupying his mind was his neighbor. She had moved into the apartment next door two months ago, and since then, the entire building had been consumed by a swirling vortex of rumors, theories, and wild accusations, and all of it centered on the unsettling possibility that she might be an alien. Max, being a rational man, despite the occasional outburst at his toaster, didn't buy into such outlandish claims. Sure, there were some oddities, like how she never seemed to go grocery shopping, or that weird glowing light that occasionally flickered under her door. But really, who didn't have glowing lights in their apartment from time to time? Plus, she was hot, in a kind of unsettling way, like someone who might ask you out for coffee, but also secretly dissect your brain. Yet the whispers of the building's residents had grown louder with each passing day. So, you know what they say about people who have no reflection, Max? His downstairs neighbor, Marge, had told him one morning while watering her suspiciously large ferns. Aliens. They don't reflect back light the same way. It's basic science. Maybe she's just really good at avoiding mirrors, Max had suggested, though his curiosity was starting to get the better of him. And those packages, Marge added, always arriving in boxes with no labels. I saw one burst open last week, nothing but small black cubes inside. You ever seen a human order black cubes before, Max? Max had to admit he hadn't. After days of intense deliberation, Max decided it was time to put an end to the nonsense once and for all. He, Max Nads, would confront the mystery head on. The plan was simple. Knock on her door, introduce himself, and ask something innocuous like, Hey, do you happen to be a non-terrestrial life form bent on harvesting our species for some intergalactic experiment? You know, icebreaker stuff. He waited until evening, when he was certain she'd be home. The apartment building was eerily quiet as he approached her door. Apartment 3, B. He could practically hear the distant hum of conspiracy theories buzzing in the minds of his neighbors, who were undoubtedly spying on him from their windows. Max hesitated for a moment, then knocked. The door opened almost immediately, and Max found himself staring into the largest pair of violet eyes he had ever seen. They blinked at him slowly, and for a moment, he was convinced that Marge might have been right. The woman, alien, had hair the color of molten silver, and her skin had the faintest shimmer, like she had just been lightly dusted with star particles. Can I help you? She asked in a voice that was simultaneously sultry and unsettlingly mechanical, like she'd taken a voice modulation course, but it hadn't quite stuck. Max, who had spent days crafting the perfect opening line, immediately forgot everything. Uh, he said eloquently. I, uh, live next door. Max Nads, you know, like, Nads, ha ha ha. So, what's in the boxes? The woman, alien, blinked slowly again, then tilted her head, clearly trying to process whether Max was making a sexual innuendo or just deeply confused. Finally, she smiled, though it was the kind of smile you give when you've decided that dissecting someone's brain might be fun after all. Oh, the boxes, she said, her voice like velvet that had been fed through a blender. Just personal items. Nothing. Nefarious. Max squinted at her, as though this might help him detect lies. It did not. He noticed, however, that her hair appeared to be moving, slowly like it was waving in an underwater current, which, you know, normal humans definitely didn't do. Oh, well, cool. So you're definitely not like an alien or something, right? Not that I'm uh, accusing you, just wondering. The woman, alien, paused, her violet eyes narrowing slightly. An alien? What a curious question. Is that what the people here think of me? Max felt his stomach drop. His palms were sweating, which he tried to discreetly wipe on his pants, only to succeed in making it much more obvious. Ha <laughs> ha, no. Well, maybe, I mean, you know how it is. Gossip. People talk. Weird packages, black cubes, suspicious lack of groceries. I see, she said, her voice now colder than an intergalactic glacier. Would you like to come inside, Max Nads? There it was, the moment, the decision. 
Max's brain screamed at him to retreat, but his legs, ever the reckless ones, carried him forward. Before he knew it, he was standing in her apartment, which was dark and filled with, yep, black cubes. Everywhere. Stacked against the walls, piled on the table, even precariously balancing on top of the refrigerator. Max gulped. You, uh, really like cubes, huh? The woman, alien, turned to him, her violet eyes now glowing faintly. Therefore, research. Max nodded slowly. Research? Yeah, cool, cool. What kind of research? She moved closer, her hair still doing that creepy, flowing thing, and leaned in just a little too close. Human anatomy. Max's heart skipped several beats. Uh, what now? I've been sent here, she continued, her voice low and dripping with something that could only be described as ominous, to understand your species, to learn its weaknesses, and perhaps its strengths. Max's brain was scrambling to catch up with what was happening. It wasn't going well. This is strengths. She smiled again, this time with a bit too much tooth. You'll do nicely for my study. Max's survival instincts finally kicked in. Uh, actually, I think I left my stove on. Oh, wait, no. My stove tried to kill me last week. Uh, I mean, I left the window open in my shower. Gotta go. He bolted for the door, but before he could escape, she caught him by the arm, her grip surprisingly gentle but firm. Max nads, she said softly. You're not afraid, are you? Max's mouth opened, but nothing came out except a small, high-pitched squeak. Suddenly, the atmosphere changed. The glowing in her eyes dimmed, and she let go of his arm, laughing, a light musical laugh that seemed at odds with the whole impending alien dissection vibe. I'm kidding, Max. Relax. I'm not here to abduct or probe anyone. I just really like black cubes and solitude. I'm from a distant star system, yes, but I'm here on vacation. Max blinked, still trying to comprehend what just happened. Vacation? That's it? Mm-hmm. She smiled more genuinely this time. Your species is fascinating, but sometimes I just need a break. So I came here. Though I must say, your neighbors are hilarious with their rumors. Aliens, really? Max, finally regaining his ability to think, gave a nervous chuckle. Yeah, well... You know how people are. We get a little weird. The alien woman, who had casually just revealed she was definitely an alien, grinned and patted him on the shoulder. Maybe we'll hang out sometime, Max. You seem fun. Just try not to spread any more gossip about me, okay? Max nodded numbly and stumbled back out into the hallway. As the door to her apartment closed behind him, he realized two things. First, that the rumors had been mostly true. And second, that despite everything, he kind of liked her. Great. Max Nads had a crush on an alien. Just what he needed. Max Nads, now firmly locked in what could only be described as a cosmic will-they-won't-they they with his alien neighbor, found himself in an increasingly strange series of encounters. Every time he thought he had figured her out, something would happen that left him wondering if he'd been living in an episode of a particularly risque space soap opera. It had started a week after their first conversation. Max had returned from work, where he spent his days selling what the company called energy-efficient, fusion-powered spatulas. It was a very niche market. And he found a note slipped under his door. Written in perfect, elegant handwriting, it simply said, Max, come over. I need a hand with something. The note wasn't signed, but Max didn't need a telepathic connection to know who it was from. With his heart doing its now-familiar race towards cardiac arrest, he went next door and knocked, wondering if needing a hand was an alien euphemism for something much, much more exciting or dangerous. The door slid open to reveal his neighbor, looking as serene and alien beautiful as ever, but this time dressed in something far more casual, a flowing, iridescent robe that barely clung to her shoulders. It shimmered much like her hair and left very little to the imagination. Or rather, it stimulated Max's imagination in all the wrong ways. Oh, good, you're here, she said, her voice a purr of velvet and circuitry. I was wondering if you could help me with a little adjustment. Max's mouth went dry. Adjustment? 
Uh, sure. What exactly do you need adjusted? She gestured inside and Max noticed that the apartment was still filled with those strange black cubes. But this time there were also several peculiar gadgets scattered about, each one buzzing softly or blinking with lights. There's a, shall we say, device that needs calibrating? And I thought someone with your skills might be perfect for the job. Max blinked. Skills? I mean, I'm not really a tech guy, but I can, uh, I can try. Her smile widened ever so slightly. Oh, it's not really about technology, Max. It's about precision and finesse. I just need you to handle it carefully. We wouldn't want any mishaps, would we? Max swallowed hard, his mind jumping to about 20 different possible meanings of mishaps, all of which ended in something exploding, probably including him. Right, no mishaps. Got it. She led him into the room, and he was suddenly very aware of how close they were standing. The smell of something exotic and intoxicating, maybe interstellar perfume, maybe alien pheromones, hung in the air, making it hard to focus. Max's eyes darted to the nearest gadget on the table, which looked suspiciously like a glorified egg beater, but was humming with a low rhythmic thrum that made his spine tingle. Is uh, this the device? Max asked, pointing. She glanced at it and then laughed, a sound that was both enchanting and slightly predatory. Oh no, Max, that's for something entirely different. This is what I need you for. She slid closer and gestured to a large cylindrical pod tucked in the corner of the room. The thing was smooth and gleaming, with wires trailing out of it in every direction. It hummed with the same deep resonance that made the floor vibrate slightly under Max's feet. I just need you to adjust this knob here, she said leaning over the device in such a way that Max's attention was momentarily very divided between the task at hand and the view. Be gentle, though. If you turn it too hard, the whole thing could go off. Max cleared his throat and leaned in. So just a little twist, right? Mm-hmm, she purred, her breath warm against his neck. Just a little. And if you do it just right, you might get a surprising reaction. Max's hand trembled as he reached for the knob. His fingers wrapped around it, and he carefully turned it. A low hum grew louder, the floor vibrating more intensely. Ah, she sighed. That's it, Max. Just like that. Suddenly, the hum shifted, becoming a deep, throbbing pulse that filled the room. Max felt the hair on the back of his neck stand up as a bright light flashed from the pod. For a moment, everything in the room seemed to shimmer, like reality was being peeled back. And then, pop, the light flickered out and the room settled. Max let out a breath he hadn't realized he was holding. Uh, did I do it? Oh, you did something, she said, her voice thick with amusement. But I think you might have triggered a little more than you expected. Max blinked. What do you... Before he could finish, there was a shimmer in the air, just like the light that had burst from the pod. But this time, it wasn't just the pod reacting. It was the room itself. The very air seemed to ripple like water. And as Max watched in shock, figures began to materialize out of thin air. One by one they appeared, humanoid shapes flickering into view, like someone had turned off a cloaking device. There were at least six of them, tall, elegant, and vaguely threatening looking. Each one was dressed in similar iridescent robes, their skin shimmering in the same alien way as his neighbors. They surrounded Max, all of them staring at him with unsettling intensity. Max's mouth went dry. Oh, crap! His neighbor, no, definitely alien, stepped in front of him, her smile now a full, predatory grin. Max, meet my friends. They've been observing you. Cloaked, of course. I didn't want you to get overwhelmed. Max's heart was hammering in his chest. Observing? What for? The alien woman, who had never actually given him a name, he now realized, tilted her head. Oh, they're just curious about you, about your species, and of course about how adaptable you are. Max's mind was spinning. Adaptable? What do you mean? Like for experiments? The nearest alien, a tall male with deep green eyes that seemed to pierce through him, chuckled softly. No, no, Max, not experiments. Something much more 
enjoyable. Max's eyebrows shot up. Uh, enjoyable for who, exactly? Uh, the alien woman leaned in close again, her voice dropping to a sultry whisper. For all of us, Max, you see, we're here on a very special kind of mission, one that involves pleasure, understanding, and perhaps a little interspecies cooperation. Max's brain short-circuited. Wait, are you saying you all want to? She smirked, her violet eyes twinkling with mischief. Oh, yes, Max, but don't worry. We'll take it slow. After all, you're only human. Max stumbled backward, his face flushed. I, uh, I didn't. I mean, this is a lot. Another alien, this one with deep blue skin and silver hair, stepped forward. We've studied your species extensively, Max. We're very curious about certain things. Intimacy, emotion, pleasure. You can help us. Understand? And that appendage of yours seems to have a mind of its own? Max's mind raced. He was simultaneously terrified, flattered, and, despite his better judgment, maybe a little intrigued. Look, uh, I don't usually do well under pressure, especially when surrounded by glowing aliens with godlike hair. The lead alien, the one who had invited him over, laughed softly. Oh, Max, you're adorable. But I promise once we begin, you'll forget all about your human anxieties. Max's toaster flashed through his mind. If this was happening, he really hoped they were better at managing expectations than his kitchen appliances. Well, I guess this is happening, Max muttered, as the aliens closed in around him, their eyes gleaming with curiosity and something else. Something that Max wasn't sure he was quite ready for, but, well, he had always been a sucker for curiosity. All right, then, he said, bracing himself for whatever intergalactic understanding was about to occur. Let's get this cooperation started. And with that, Max Nads realized that living next to an alien wasn't just the weirdest thing that had ever happened to him. It was also about to become the most interesting. Max Nads woke up feeling groggy and a bit disoriented. His first thought was that he had maybe had one too many interstellar cocktails. But as his vision cleared and his mind started working, he remembered everything from the night before. The shimmer the aliens, and that whole interspecies cooperation business. He slowly sat up, glancing around the room. His apartment was the same as it always was, messy, cluttered, and distinctly lacking any futuristic alien technology. He glanced down at himself. No strange marks, no tentacles sprouting from anywhere. A part of him wondered if he had dreamt it all, but the lingering smell of that exotic alien perfume told him otherwise. Just as he was processing the events, there was a knock at the door. Max froze. The aliens. He could still hear their voices echoing in his head. Pleasure. Understanding. Cooperation. With some reluctance, he opened the door to find his alien neighbor. Let's call her Zira because at this point, she definitely deserved a name. Standing there looking nervous. Max, we need to talk, she said in a voice that suggested things were about to get a lot more complicated. Max blinked. Uh, talk about what? Last night? Because you know I don't usually wake up to interspecies, uh, cooperation. Is this about, like, alien customs or... Zira cut him off. No, Max, it's more serious than that. She hesitated, which was unnerving, considering she was normally so smooth and in control. There's been a development, something we didn't expect. Max's mind raced through a dozen different possibilities, ranging from alien government wants to erase his memory to they've decided he's a galactic criminal for violating some obscure space law. But what she said next floored him. We're pregnant, Max. Max stared at her blankly for a moment, trying to make sense of the words. We're what now? Pregnant, Zira repeated, her eyes searching his face for some kind of reaction. All of us. Max's jaw dropped. You mean all of you? Zira nodded gravely. Yes, every single one of us from last night. It wasn't supposed to be possible. Human genes shouldn't be compatible with ours. But somehow you, your genes are... Max's brain did a backflip and landed on its face. Wait, wait, wait. I, I got all of you pregnant? That's... 
I mean, no offense, but I'm just a guy from Earth. I can barely keep a house plant alive, let alone... Zira sighed, stepping into his apartment and closing the door behind her. This is bigger than either of us expected. Your DNA, Max, you're not just an ordinary human. Our scientists analyzed your genetic material after the encounter. She gave him a look that told him he shouldn't dwell on that part too long. It turns out you carry a unique genetic signature that matches an ancient lost clan of our people. A clan that disappeared over 200,000 Earth years ago during an expedition to find a new homeworld. Max blinked, still processing the I got a bunch of aliens pregnant part, and now he had to absorb the idea that he was, apparently, part of some lost alien lineage. Wait, you're telling me I'm some kind of long-lost alien descendant? Zira nodded solemnly. Yes, we believe your ancestors were part of the expedition that went missing millennia ago. Their DNA mixed with the early humans they encountered, and over time that connection was forgotten. But now... She placed a hand on her stomach, and for the first time, Max noticed that her iridescent robe seemed to hug her body in a way that suggested she was already changing. Now the connection has resurfaced. Max felt his knees go weak. He stumbled toward his couch and sat down heavily. So let me get this straight. My ancestors were aliens. They got stuck on Earth. And somehow, after generations of crossbreeding with humans, I've inherited whatever ancient alien mojo they had. Damn, that's some fertile DNA. And I am a watered-down version? Zira smiled faintly. That's a very simplistic way of putting it, but yes. Max ran a hand through his hair, trying to wrap his head around it. And now, you and your friends are pregnant with, what, little half-human, half-alien babies? Because of me? Zira nodded again, looking both amused and sympathetic. Yes, and this is unprecedented. We didn't think it was possible for anyone from our species to conceive with a human. But your DNA, it's the missing link. Max slumped back on the couch, his mind reeling. Great, so now I'm some kind of ancient alien baby daddy. This is not how I expected my week to go. Zira sat beside him, placing a gentle hand on his shoulder. Max, this is bigger than just us. If our people find out about this, it could change everything. Your genes. They could hold the key to reviving our lost clan, to solving mysteries we thought were lost to time. Max stared at her, dumbfounded. So what? Am I supposed to raise a bunch of intergalactic alien kids now? Zira smiled softly. We'll figure it out together. But right now, we have to be careful. There are factions in the galaxy that won't take kindly to this. If they find out, you and our children could be in danger. Max's heart raced. Danger? What kind of danger? Let's just say not everyone in the galaxy is as excited about new hybrids as we are, Zira said, her tone turning serious. There are those who would see this as a threat to the balance of power. If they find out you carry the lost genes of our people, they might come for you. Or worse, for the children. Max swallowed hard. So I'm not just an intergalactic baby daddy. I'm an intergalactic target, too? Zira gave him a sympathetic smile. Yes, but you're not alone in this. We'll protect you. We've already made preparations. My friends and I, we're going to need your help, Max. You're not just part of our past. You're part of our future now. Max leaned back, his mind spinning. This was so not how I thought this would go. I was just trying to figure out if you were an alien. And now I'm apparently the chosen one for some ancient alien bloodline and about to be a father to a bunch of half-alien babies. Zira stood and walked to the door, turning to look at him with those shimmering violet eyes. Get some rest, Max. You're going to need it. We'll talk more soon. For now we are safe on Earth, but who knows for how long. As the door closed behind her, Max sat in stunned silence, staring at the spot where she had just stood. Well, he muttered to himself, at least it's not another fight with the toaster.